What's going on to all my friends going through this journey called life? How are y'all doing today? You know I try to keep, let me back up a second. There's a few videos back ago where I was talking about how I keep everything as real as possible on this channel. The good, the bad, and the ugly, everything. Um, I don't care what it is. It's I'm sh This is my journey and I'm sharing it with y'all. One more thing. My name is Weldon and you're watching the Weldonator's Empty Journey. All right, y'all. So, yesterday, I rode my scooter to work, brought my charge with the intent to charge it at work because I knew it was, it was getting low. By the time I got to work, it was going to be low enough to charge. When I got to work, it was 24% left in the battery. I can't remember what voltage it was, but it was, it was close. It was low enough to where I needed to charge it. Hence saying 24% in the battery. Well, got to work, hooked the charger up to the scooter then plugged it in the wall and the charger came out showing it had a green light which means fully charged I was like, there's no way with the better the charger still hooked up I turned the scooter on and kablamo 24% I was like all right cool what's going on so I decided to go ahead and move complete wall plugs to go to a different location maybe maybe at work that one was going bad or something I don't I don't know so I went moved it Plugged it into that other one, same thing. Green light on the charger. I'm like, what is going on here, dude? Not cool. 24%. If I go home on 24%, I'm gonna be cutting it super close because it's a four, four and a half mile ride home. And as long as I feathered, I knew I'd be okay. But by the time I got home, I knew I knew I'd be like around one percent. So I went ahead, stopped thinking about it so much so that way I wouldn't get frustrated and irritated and angry because I was like man this is the first issue I've had with this scooter what's going on went back to my uh, finished eating lunch went and uh, did back to my stuff went back to the front to do my job trying not to think about it but it always stays right here in the nugget and you're like all right dude and you're constantly thinking about it what, what could be going on I didn't want to start going online and googling what's going on because I was like I'm at work I don't want to get sidetracked I need to be visual of everything because we had some crazy suspect stuff going on at work went ahead and I was like all right cool forget about it time to go home and at that point I was like all right and I started sweating a little bit and later as long as I feathered I'd be good went out back started feathering on the way home doing excellent all the way and I was almost home, started seeing 3% left on the battery. Because what I did is, uh, I know the, flux, the the range fluctuates as you're on the juice and off the juice. So I'm on the juice and I'm seeing it go down to like 3% and the voltage down to lower than uh, 59 volts. And I was like, all right, this isn't good. This is, good. This is gonna be super close. So I kept going, feathering it. I was getting worried because it was super windy yesterday, 40 mile an hour gusts, uh, 20, 15 to 20 miles sustained. So I was like, all right, that's gonna suck juice too. So I decided to stay seated as much as I could. So that way it'd be more aerodynamic. Everything was working perfect. Got closer to home. I, 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 I got, uh, it was about maybe a mile, quarter mile to half mile from home. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna stop here for a second. Let the let the let the juice and everything kind of go back up. See where I'm sitting at. See who, how close I am. If I might need to be walking. Got to where I waited long enough to where it did show three percent battery, and I don't remember what the voltage was. But I was like, dude, this is getting kind kind of a uh, huh, kind of close. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll be all right. I just need to feather a little bit more. Got home with I think it was three percent. Uh, hang on, I'll be right back. Let me check. Just check it. Double goose egg percentage, and I hate putting it down that low with the 60.9% volt or 60.9 volt left in the in the juice in the battery. Oh man, I was super close because the, the closer, like right when I got across the, across the big street from my house, boy, had to get a good push through the leg to like get it going. And uh, 
literally crawled it in. Yeah, it's all good. I made it home, didn't have to walk. Didn't put the, didn't strain the battery too much where it was like below double goose egg, double zero. It still had a, like maybe a half to a volt left into it. So I was like, all right, whoo, good stuff. Cause I don't like, I don't want to drain it down to where it has nothing in the cells. Yeah, so today I'm gonna be taking apart, we're, we're gonna be taking apart the deck to go into the internals to see I did a little bit of research and it was talking about how it could be the charging ports that uh, come loose or something like that. Talked to the dudes I ride in the group ride with, Rock, James, and Charles. Rock and Charles were telling me uh, it has to be with low voltage as well. So I'm going to go into the deck. We're going to go in the deck, check it out. Y'all are going to go in there with me to see what's going down because I've never been inside here before. I'm Honestly, I'm excited to see what's up. That's the mechanic side of me. <laughs> I like going to explore, but I'm nervous at first until I have to go do it. And once I have to go do it, I feel more comfortable because like I got to do it now. Today, we're going to be going inside, checking things out. The term that Rocky used, which is what I love because it takes me back to my mechanic days. I'm popping the hood on the scooter. <laughs> I'm be popping the hood, uh, scoping everything out, redoing the Loctite if I need to redo Loctite on the, on the uh, deck screws, which I've done before when I did the seat. So this time, uh, we're going a little bit deeper than the seat, y'all. We're going internal. Hope y'all are ready for this ride. And like I said, I like showing everything. And I know that past video, I was like, I've had no issues. I'm at, I think it was at 1,500 miles. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. 1,534 miles or 1,534 on the, on, the, on the scooter so far. Not too bad. Almost uh, 1,600 miles for had any issues whatsoever. And I wouldn't even call this an issue. I'll call this more of like a maintenance thing to where it's like you got to kind of change your oil every so often or check your transmission fluid, check your blinker fluid. No, I'm just kidding. Checking, just checking things out, make sure everything's good to go. Like I said, I don't go off-roading and this is the reason why uh, I don't go off-roading because you jar things loose. And as you see in a lot of all my videos, I'm mostly on the sidewalk or on the street or on the bike trail. Never on dirt unless I go to like a stealth camp or go to check a stealth camping spot out, which is where I got to go in there. So for whenever I do like a, hopefully I get to do some scooter packing this year. Hopefully it's not gonna be raining like it was last year when I got the scooter. I'm hoping for really good weather this year so I can take the scooter along and do some scooter packing. Slide up in those stealth spots, post up, put a tarp up and chill. That's the plan, that's the goals. We may be doing some, since this guy's down, to keep video, to video from my journey. I may end up doing some hiking, some camping, some stealth camping, something, depending on how long this takes me to get it going. I'm missing a group ride today. They started at 945 out in Murphy at t uh, Tom, Tom something stadium, Tom Kimbrough stadium out in Murphy. So I'm kind of bummed about missing that, but I got, I went ahead, went to the gym instead this morning to replace that so way I can continue my conditioning. Bummed out about missing the ride today because I, I love, since I rode with the first ride with those guys, I love it. Those guys are really nice and really cool. I feel welcomed. I don't feel like an outcast or anything like that at all. So I'm, I'm bummed about missing that, but excited at the same time work because I got to go to the gym, even though that's where I work at. Today, we're about to go into this guy here in a second. Right now it's 1.19 p.m. April 12th of 2024. All right, y'all. I'm done yapping and gabbing. Uh, just filling space up. So let's go and do the job. Here we go, y'all. All right, y'all. We're gonna do this for the better. We're gonna start off with taking the seat off first. And you're gonna need a, uh, a number five Allen wrench to go into this, the, the Allen screws for the, for the seat itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the seat off and I'll bring y'all back to, to take the deck off of the sec. Actually, before I take the deck off, I'm gonna have to cut some, cut two more, yeah, two more uh, slits for where the Allen screws going out for the deck. So that way I don't have to take off the whole pla uh, rubber piece for the deck. Only the spot for the actual Allen screws. All right, y'all, bring you back in a second for that part, okay? All right, y'all, seat's off. I know you don't see it like this very often, but the seat is off. <laughs> now, I'm gonna find another Allen screw here and some over here. I'm just taking it for the seat, cut out two little squares so that way I can get the Allen screw and not have to take out this whole rubber mat and have to re-glue it down. So that way, yeah. That's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna find those two Allen screws and then cut a little square out around them. 
just like I did here for these four. Remove everything, get everything going. So bear with me because this is something that I wasn't excited to see, but at the same time, it's like I am kind of excited to do. I wasn't happy about my first co uh, error code, but you know, things happen. Life sometimes hits you. As of now, I'm gonna be back to relying on my truck, which is okay. She, it runs great. But yeah, I enjoy riding this a whole lot more if I can, uh, going everywhere and doing everything. All right, y'all, uh, here we go. We're going to get these Allen screws found and cut out and removed. Bring y'all back whenever I get everything done. All right, y'all, found them. It's right here and right here. So now what we're gonna do is, let me get a, uh, let me get a uh, razor blade right quick. Put that back up there. Let me get this razor blade here. Uh, put you back in. And now we're going to uh, cut this out. Battery's about to go dead, dead y'all. I got like 10% battery left in this in, in this battery on the GoPro. And when it runs out, I'll change it out and bring it out back. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use all the juice in this battery that I can. So it goes beep, 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 and it shuts off. So here we go. Let's go check this out. Sorry, my arm's in the way, y'all. Apologize. Just thought about that just now as I was doing it. There's one. Chuck this in the trash. There. Just turn it all over this way now so you can see the side. Sorry. You got these final two bolts for Allen screws. Here we go, y'all. Final two Allen screws. And this is gonna be a smaller Allen wrench, which is going to be, what size are you, little guy? Okay, this is gonna be a size four. So you use a, you use a five for the seat Allen, Allen screws, and then for the deck itself, there's a size four Allen screw. Let's take it apart, y'all. Sorry if I seem a little crooked, but adjust the GoPro so that way it's it's flat and at an angle I hope it's coming out good for y'all it looked like when I saw it on display there's one all right I didn't tell y'all uh, the code that it threw was an error code 5 which means under voltage charge ports might be loose or fault connection with them um, so that's why I've got to go into the deck, pop the hood on there, and uh, check my, my charging ports because I think that's probably why it was uh, not getting a charge, not, not wanting to charge and showing you that it was already a full charge. The green light was already coming on. I'll go in there, check that. Other sites were saying that it could be the throttle. I don't, th I think it's in the deck. I really, really do. Um, some people, uh, it's also said that it could be a fuse. So we're about to find out what's going on. I just showed you I took off the seat. Again, this is error code five. Let's go in and check everything out, see what it's like on the insides. Uh, see if, I pray to God that all it is is my charging ports. Uh, I got a connection loose there or something. Because on the dual, on the fast charger, you got to plug in both dual ports. So that way it doesn't short it out, blow a fuse or anything like that at all. And I always plug, I always put the ports up first and then plug it in. So uh, I don't think it could be a fuse. I don't think it's a throttle. So we'll go into the worst part scenario first and go in the deck first. So that way that's already out the way and then I'll check everything else. I just would rather go, rather, go, rather I would rather go and do the hard stuff first and then check the easier stuff later. I know that sounds backwards, but 
I don't know. I'm just wanting to go inside the deck, I think. Let's go in here and check this out, y'all. Weather for doing this today is absolutely awesome. Right now, here in Plano, Texas, temperature is 80 degrees. It's supposed to get to 82, but it feels absolutely phenomenal outside right now. It's not overly hot. You may hear my fan going. I've got my uh, industrial fan in front of uh, whenever I was in the mechanic shop. Got it going right now. So I've got it on low, so I hope it's not too loud. I can always turn up the volume inside the edit, so hopefully not. Hopefully you're hearing me just fine. I'm not using my external mic. I'm using just a straight GoPro. I've been noticing that on the media mod that goes around the GoPro for using the putting the lights on and then hooking up my external mic and everything, that drains the juice out of these batteries extremely fast. So that's what I'm trying to trying to get away from the media mod and go back to just the normal GoPro. So the way the batteries last long, I'm not constantly having to be, oh, I'm almost a battery, I'm almost out of battery. Uh, when I did the group ride, I didn't use a media mod and it came out spectacular, if you ask me. The battery lasted forever. I used just this this one here, the GoPro 12, on my chest for almost practically the entire ride. And then at the very last rest stop, uh, this camera died and I put you on the handlebars uh, for the GoPro 9 and used that for the rest of the ride and the battery lasted perfectly fine. It didn't drain fast like it always does. So we're trying out this way. Hopefully you can hear me fine. If not, then I need to get my external mic back out and go from there. And now we're about to go, I got the seat off. Now we're about to go into the deck. We'll see how that goes and what it looks like in there. I'll bring you along for that and show all the internals. Let's go check things out, y'all. All right, I've got y'all on the jack stand right now. So whenever I pop this hood, Y'all see what's going down too. All right, y'all ready? Uh, I'm pretty excited, here we go. Never done this before, I'm nervous. At the same time, how does this come off? Does it slide out? Does it do anything special? Does it just come up and come out? Ooh, it looks like it, ah, uh, maybe one more screw, y'all. Maybe what it is. It is what it is. Okay, bring y'all back with the screws out. All right, the last and final screw is right back here, the very, very back. See, that's why I wanted to be careful because I normally would just ripped it up, but I was like, no, I better be careful. So it didn't feel right like the front did. So I wanted to be more careful here. I'm glad I was. I'm glad I didn't decide to just rip it up. All right, cool. So, the deck actually has two, four, six, seven screws for it right there, so. All right, let me get this screw out and I'll bring y'all back so you can see the internals. All right, we're back. All right, y'all, three, two, one. Take that off too. Ta-da! There she is, there she is. The charging ports are on this side right here. Now, let me figure out how to take this battery out so we can check the charging ports. In the meantime, all we're gonna do now is focus on getting this error code five fixed so we can get it charged up. All right, one thing I am seeing y'all is that it'll probably help me if I get this uh, rear motor wire out of the way because it's running literally right next to the battery along with this uh, brake cable right here to the rear brakes. Um, let's see. I'm gonna leave it along for this ride too so we all can see everything that I'm doing here. So it's gonna be more of a guess and check situation than it is just to get right down and do it, nitty gritty thing. So let's guess and check this out right now. Let's guess, we're gonna move this wire here, the motor wire, so we can get a good clear grip the battery and that way I also have it for here so if I go forget how it goes back together I've got it on video the way I can see how I did it this battery is heavy so what is the best way to do it the best way to get you out of here oh I got this thing in here tight all right y'all now that I got the the video of what goes where with the wire situation. I'm gonna turn you off because it's gonna take me a little bit longer than I am expecting to get this battery out, to be safe and sound with it. So tear anything up, 
pinch any wires because there's a, a bunch of wires in here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. So as you can see, all up in here, there's a bunch of wires up in there. This this is the motor, rear motor wire that goes all the way to the back. It runs on that side of the scooter, and this is the brake cable right here for the rear brake. So as you can see, it's a very tight space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera off and focus on getting this battery out without pinching wires, uh, hurting any wires that don't need to be hurt, and getting this battery out without messing the battery up. So I'll bring y'all back whenever we get the battery out. And then I'll tell you how I figured out how to do it. That way this battery doesn't die on me because this is the last battery I've got. I haven't charged up any other ones. All right, y'all. I'll bring it back in a little bit. All right, guys. <clears throat> Still working on this battery. Got frustrated. I was like, you know what? Called my buddy Rock that used to have this scooter. And uh, he had to do, he took, up, took out the battery and stuff like that himself. Uh, wasn't working for me the way he was saying to do it. With the duct tape, I wasn't really quite comprehending how he was talking about doing it, so it's probably on me, my fault. So I went to the one guy that I know deals with these scooters all the time, works on them all the time, has his own company to do aftermarket stuff, uh, uh, like chargers, uh, all kinds of different stuff for scooters and, and POV, PEVs and stuff. So I typed in uh, to the search bar of the YouTube how to remove the battery from the Cabo Wolf King GT Pro. And of course, my boy, Ginger on Wheels, one of his videos pops up. And uh, he shows how to get the battery out by laying it on the side, sliding it out that way. Uh, also, what might have happened, I hope to God this is what happened because it'd be the easiest fix is what I just saw just now on the old YouTube. Could be the fuses. There's two fuses that, that they have and they're cheap Chinese fuses that they throw in there for uh, getting the scooter out the door after they sold them. And then if they blow, you can always upgrade to a better fuse. I think they said they're five by, I don't remember, something millimeter. I'll go back to the video and check it out. But he had the same issue. His scooter wasn't charging anymore and he wouldn't check the fuses and one of the fuses was blown. It, to buy a pack of 10, it's 10 bucks. That's a lot cheaper than anything else I can think of that's going on with the scooter. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show how he laid it on the side, got the battery out, super duper easy. I'll show you the fuses he was talking about and go from there. I pray that this is it because this will be a, all I need is run to the Home Depot, grab the fuses, and bada bing, bada boom, we're done back to charging like we should be let's go ahead and do this situation for the battery lay, lay it on the side slide it out put it up on the on the jack stand and then uh, check those fuses man this would be such a fast quick uh, fix if this is all it is I'm praying to God that this is all it is because I'm not a very electrical technical person when it comes to electricity and stuff and electronics but I am learning. I just don't give up. I keep trying, I, I look at videos. I go to what I call YouTube, is I call YouTube the, let me get this right, the trade school of all trade schools. Because anything you wanna do is basically on there. Sometimes you'll find videos that break it down super simple, kinda like for those books for dummies. And sometimes you get the ones that are like, eh, dude kinda blows through it like, like you know what he's talking about. So, but Ginger on Wheels, he always breaks it down super simple to where you understand what's going on. And that's why I love his videos. And I love watching him, huge supporter of him. I buy a lot of my, uh, bought my super fast charger off of him on his, uh, on his uh, site that he has. Uh, I have to get that site for y'all. Let me get it real fast. All right, if you're looking for great aftermarket stuff for your scooter, Go to Ginger on Wheels' Ginger on Wheels site. It's called PEVoutlet.com. Uh, he's started his own business up by doing this. He sells all kinds of stuff on there. Go check it out. 
He sells everything from fast chargers to, uh, um, uh, <laughs> excuse me, uh, fast chargers all the way to, um, uh, uh, screws, uh, like your, your colored, uh, uh, screws, tires, tubes, floating brake rotor sets, lug nuts, uh, covers, he sells those fuses, uh, as well. But yeah, uh, he sells locks, sells a carbon fire style handlebar extender. Dude sells everything. And I suggest air pumps, uh, locks, chargers. If you're looking for anything for your PEV, go check him out. Uh, I know a lot of people suggest a lot of other places, but I've ordered quite a few things from him so far. And I highly recommend him. Again, that is PEVoutlet.com. You'll be happy. You get everything in a, in a fair amount of time when you order it. It's usually within the next uh, day or two it ships, and you get it within the next few days. All the prices are reasonable. Uh, go check him out. I think you'll like what he's got on his page. Support him. Uh, give him back him up. That way he can continue doing giving us great prices on stuff that other places overprice. Uh, so check him out. I hope you like it. Again, his channel is also Ginger on Wheels. He's got great content, y'all. He, he gets scooters, all kinds of scooters, does all kinds of uh, scooter reviews. Dude's just magnificent. He teaches you a lot. He's taught me a whole lot, and I'm, <laughs> this is my first electric scooter. For me to be feeling brave enough to go into the deck and do the electric work that I'm doing, which isn't big, but to me it is because I'm not an electrical type of guy. Even when I worked in the shop, if there's ever electric work that came in the shop, I always pass that ticket on to somebody else that knows what they're doing because I don't want to be the guy that messes somebody's car up or vehicle, any vehicle up and then uh, be like, oops, my bad. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm learning. So no, I'm not going to do that. So for me doing my own vehicle, it's, it's kind of a big step for me, which will help me in the long run. Also save money for having this be a huge shipping expense because I've got the warranty from Cabo, the three year extended warranty. I think it was four. Anyway, three or four year extended warranty. Just to ship this sucker back to Voro, I don't know how much it's gonna cost because this thing weighs a, a buck, 117 pounds, 120 pounds, somewhere right in there. So that's not a cheap expense to ship. So if I can do any work that I can myself, they'll send me whatever parts that I need for under warranty. I'll do whatever I can here before I even think about sending it back to them. Yeah, that's that's how that's going down for me. If there's something I can't do, then over the over the seas it goes, but over the sea, over the across the U.S half the US for me because I'm in Texas they're Cali all right y'all I'm gonna go and uh, try and I'll show you what I'm talking about whenever I do the scooter to get the battery out here in a second and from what it looked like for me super simple to him and then to do the uh, fuse is super duper simple all right y'all here we go all right y'all this is what ginger on wheels told me to do this is how he did it this is how he did it so let's give it a shot y'all here we go come on battery Come on, easy keys. Here we go. Here we go. How did he do it? Suckers in here, good and tight, y'all. Give me a second, y'all. All right, y'all. Like I was saying, the way Ginger on Wheels showed me in the video how to do it by laying it on its side and kind of wiggling it out, not having to work against gravity, it works a lot easier because what, the hardest part to get out, the hardest part to get out is his back side because there's really and truly no room for, to like move it to the from the front because it's backed up all the way against his back of the back of the uh, back of the deck uh, part right there. As you can see, there's like no room whatsoever. So whenever you try to lift it from front, nothing. As you lay it on the side, you're able to put your hand down over here and kind of wiggle it out a little bit and then it comes out a lot easier. Uh, the fuses that I have to replace are on the front side of the battery right in here. So that's why I had to uh, get it out first. So that way I can get to the fuses. Um, I probably could have wiggled them out from the very front but uh, I'm I'm afraid to uh, 
pull a wire because they're very small. I think he said they're 20 gauge, 10 gauge. I can't really remember, but another small wires. And I don't want to really mess them up because they'll pull out easy and oh man, that's not good. Got this out now. Now I went and checked out the fuses, and these little guys are not cheap. Uh, a two pack is almost like 10 bucks. Um, but if I go to Ginger's page and order from uh, PEVOutlet.com, I get a pack of 10 of them for, I think it was six bucks, five bucks, somewhere right in there. So I'm going to go to him and get them instead. Uh, I checked uh, Lowe's, I checked uh, Home Depot, I checked everywhere, and the price compared to quantity doesn't match compared to what Ginger can offer. So I'd rather go to him and snag them there. And I can wait because it's going to be rainy all the week next week into the following week. So I think the next two weeks are going to be rainy and sloppy. So I'm just going to be using the truck to uh, get around to and from. Uh, that way I don't mess up the scooter and I don't have to worry about charging. I can get the right parts in for cheap price. And at the same time, I'm going to order from him the lug nut covers, the gold ones. They match the scooter itself too, instead of having those rubber black ones. I lost one of the rubber black ones on the front tire and I was like, eh, what am I gonna do about that? I don't feel like getting more rubber ones. So I wanna get the, go with those. Uh, so that way it looks good, matches the scooter and it makes it pop. All right, y'all, um, as of right now, I'm gonna put this project on hold, wheel everything back inside. I'm gonna leave the, the deck top off and I'm gonna screw anything and I'm gonna leave everything out in the garage uh, the deck top put the scooter back inside so that way uh, I can pull the tr truck back in from the toolbox this project is not done so this video is not done uh, at all I can't wait to get back on here and finish it up it should be a few days because it doesn't take long for a uh, ginger on wheels to get the uh, product out to you so I asked him a question about the lug nut covers once I get the response back from that then I'll bust out and do the order and it should be here early next week so and again it's gonna be rainy so I don't, I don't care I'm not in any hurry what sucks is that right now the group, the group ride today was like started at like 60 60 degrees 70 degrees it's 82 degrees right now and look at all this sunshine y'all look how beautiful this is out here what I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and put this back up and forfeit riding this weekend which is okay I'd rather save money than to go just blow money for some fuses, I really get a big quantity so I have extra and not just get the exact amount. Do some walking and some hiking this weekend, so let me bring y'all along for that. We'll go from there, y'all. All right, y'all. In this meantime, remember, life's a journey. Ride that tasty wave. Take, take.